Hi, this is Mark from Wiki Design, and welcome back to another episode of Can I Recreate It in Elementor? In this series, we take a look at websites with interesting design elements, and I see if I can recreate those elements using the Elementor page builder. In this episode, I'm going to show you how I was able to recreate this cool expanding effect from the Walmart Plus website. So as you can see, when you scroll down the website, these sections automatically will expand. So as soon as each one of these little sections gets about halfway through the page, it expands additional information. So as you can see, it will go all the way down the page and scroll and expand. At first, I thought this could easily be pulled off just using the toggle widget inside Elementor and adding some custom JavaScript to it. But after some trial and error, I couldn't really find an easy way to pull that off. So I figured why not just use some existing JavaScript code that I know could work and so that's what I ended up doing. And I have these two uh, examples and I'll leave a link in the description below and I'll also pop up cards up here so you can just go straight to those videos if you want to pull off this type of effect. So in this one, you can see when the user scrolls down the page, I have it where each of these uh, sections are going to change the background color. So like I said, I'll leave a link in the description and up here. And then one of my recent videos is very similar effect where you scroll down and this section up here stays sticky and you can see the background color changes while these things scroll in and these buttons animate in. So here's an example of how I was able to recreate the Walmart Plus effect on this page right here. So you can see when the user scrolls down, each one of these sections right here is going to expand with more content below it. So as you can see right here, it expands out. So I actually think I'm going to be using this on client websites in the future because this effect is actually really cool and pretty easy to pull off once you add in some JavaScript and CSS. So now let's just jump right into the back end and I'm going to show you how I was able to pull this effect off. And here we are on the back end of that page and up here I just have some filler content just so the user has to scroll. And let me show you how I have everything structured out where I was able to add the JavaScript code and the CSS and kind of how everything ties together. So the very first thing we need to do is kind of understand what's happening on the front end of the website, just so this code makes a little more sense. So let me go back to the Walmart Plus website and reload this. And let's start with this section right here. So what we need to do is anytime that this section right here hits about 50% of the page, have it do something. So in this case, what we want to do is when the user scrolls down, let me open up this thing right here. So what we are going to do actually is you see these two sections right here. What I was able to easily figure out is each one of these is its own widget, or you can even do one widget if you wanted. In this case, I have two, but what we want to do is when this section hits 50%, add a class to each one of these widgets and then just have it animate uh, that effect in. So essentially that's all that this JavaScript code we're going to be using does is again, when a section like this hits 50%, add a special class to each one of these sections. Because once you have a special class on each section, you can use CSS, JavaScript to do whatever you want. So you kind of have to think in simple terms like that, where it's like, hey, when I scroll down, add some special code here, and then I will manipulate it with a CSS animation. So that's kind of how I was able to break it down in my head. And then I just have uh, the code, like I said, from these other tutorials right here to make it a lot easier. Now I'm going to show you where I have the JavaScript code. And as you can see right here, um, I'm going to keep the navigator open the whole time in the widget section over here just to make it a little bit easier. So if you look right here, we have this JavaScript code. And like I said, this is gonna look pretty similar to these other ones. And what we need to do is, this is just using jQuery, and what it's doing is it's listening for any scroll function right here. And then what we're gonna to need to do is, I'm gonna show you where these classes correspond, and then what it's doing right here. So if you look down right here, this code right here where it says uh, scroll, scroll top, window height, divide by two. Basically, this is the magic right here, where this is, if you divide it by two, that's 50%. So basically what's happening here is anytime that the scroll top of your window hits about 50%, have it do something. And so here in this case, the very first one is called panel. And if you look right here, we have a thing, a class called section one. 
show div. So now I'm gonna show you how I have everything kind of structured here and then we'll go back to this code and it will make a little more sense. So if you go back into here, what we have is each one of these is its own section. And in order to pull off that little rounded effect, I used an intersection, but if you don't want to use an intersection to keep the code a little bit cleaner, you can always go that route too. But in this example, that is just using an intersection. So if I expand this section right here, you can see it's one big column. And then underneath that column, I have the intersection, which then has two columns. We have the picture on the left and the text on the right. So the very first thing we need to do is create all of the sections that you want to have this effect. So what we need to do is, of course, we need four sections. So we have one, two, three, and the fourth section right down here. And what we need to do is go back into each one of these sections first and underneath CSS classes, call the very first one. In this case, I have it called panel. The next one is going to be called panel two. And then the third one is panel three, fourth one, panel four. So that is important because we need to have the JavaScript uh, have a different effect for each panel. Uh, you can't call it the same panel because what happens is if you scroll down and everything is just called panel, all of them are going to expand at the same time. As you can see right here in the JavaScript, we have each of the panels has its own variable assigned to this class. So the very first one, we have variable panel, and then the class is dot panel. And the next one is, you have to call it something different, panel two, and then we have panel two as a class, panel three, panel three. So it needs to be done in that structure where each of your sections needs to have its own variable right here. So if you're gonna have three, you could take out this one. If you're gonna have two more, you add two more right here. Hopefully that makes sense. And now what we need to do is, if you go underneath here, you can see that in the example that I created, this is always gonna stay uh, visible and then these are gonna be animating up. So let me refresh it just so you can kind of see how I have it laid out. You can see right here, if I scroll down, we have the image always there and then this heading is always gonna be there and then this text just kind of pushes it up. So this, you don't have to worry about, but what we need to do is add a special CSS class for these two widgets right here. So that's what I did right here. So we're in the very first section and this is just called section one for the class and same thing, you wanna just call it section one. So what's cool about this is there's no limit to how many classes you can call section one in this case. So if you have multiple widgets, you could just kind of keep going down. And then if I go down to this next section, you're gonna see very similar thing. I just copied that and made it a lot easier. So if you go underneath here, each of these widgets are called section two, section two. And then, of course, the third one is called section three. So these have to be independent per section. I know it gets a little complicated, but hopefully they will make a little more sense once we get back into the JavaScript and the CSS code. So same thing, just like the panels, we need to have it where section one is tied to the section one class. Same thing here, this variable needs to say section two equals section two section three, section four. So that's the hard part. Once you get everything kind of tied into here, then you can play around with the animations and stuff last. Now we move on to the fun part, the JavaScript, which is this right here. And let me highlight it just so you kind of better understand how this works. So basically what it's doing is this panel right here, this is the very first panel, and this is the function where when that panel reaches 50%, what it's going to do is, if you remember, let me scroll up here. So when the user's scrolling about 50%, this panel is gonna run this function. And what it's gonna do is, remember how we called this section one? So these two widgets are called section one. What it's gonna do is add this class called show div. So that's what's really cool about this JavaScript code is, it's adding a special CSS class to that section and then you can do whatever you want from there. So that's what I really like about this uh, JavaScript code is that it's adding a class basically dynamically depending on how the user's scrolling. So if you look right here, this chunk right here is very similar to this chunk. And so I just duplicated this uh, three more times. So you can see the only thing I changed out is you just gotta call it panel two in this case, and then right down here where it says section two, you 
updated to section two. I did panel three, section three. So this keeps the code really clean and you, so you can understand how it works. And you know, in the future, if you have to go back to this thing, you're gonna understand how to add, change things around. So that's about all we really need to worry about in the JavaScript code. Now let me jump into the CSS code and show you how the animations are working. And here's the CSS code. Uh, I'm using Elementor Pro and I just threw it underneath the uh, page settings under advanced. So it's tied just to this page. So I'm gonna zoom in here so you can see uh, this code a little bit better. And we have it separated out into two different uh, sections. First, we need to hide these sections. And then when that class called show div gets added to each of these sections, have it animate. Hopefully that makes sense, but let me walk through this a little bit better. So the very first thing we need to do is add all of your classes and hide it. So you wanna make it where when the user first loads up that page, these sections right here are gone. And in order to do that correctly, uh, you need to go ahead and just add each section with a comma. You, you see how it says section one, section two, section three, and they're separated by commas. And here's something I actually learned by doing this tutorial. And at first, what I thought you had to do was add a display none. And then down here, when it adds the special class called show div, then display block. Um, so after a couple hours of research, I found out that that's not how it works with CSS and the animations. Uh, CSS can't animate between a display none and a display block. And what's worse is it also can't animate between if you declared a height zero here and to a height auto. So you would think that CSS would be smart enough to go from zero to as however high as these uh, widgets will make it but that's not how CSS code works uh, as of 2022. Uh, so what we need to do is actually declare a set max height to pull this off. Uh, like I said, this took me a few hours to figure this out. And what's cool about it is I learned something new with CSS, which I have a feeling every time you work with CSS, you learn something new. So I've been doing this for over 20 years and I'm still learning almost every day new CSS stuff. So here's what that means. Um, if you look right here, we have a max height of zero. I also added overflow hidden just in case. So what we need to do is start from zero. And then if you look down here, we have a max height of 500 pixels. So I kind of calculated all of these sections never hit over 500. So if you do have a section that is a lot higher, you may need to increase this number, but it doesn't really matter too much. You just want to make sure that it's higher than what it needs because it needs to animate to something. So it needs to animate from zero to 500 pixels. So if you look right here, this is pretty standard uh, CSS transition um, code right here. I actually took this straight from the Walmart website just to make it so it animates exactly like the way they have it. But you could always change the duration. So if you want it to go a lot slower, you would change it right here. And let me do that just so you can kind of see on the front end how that looks. So instead of 700 milliseconds, let's change it to 2700 milliseconds and then show you how it animates a lot slower, you know, on the front end. So here we are on the front end of that page. And if I scroll down, you're going to notice these things are going to open up a lot slower. See how it opens up a lot slower. So you can change these to whatever you want, which is what's really cool about CSS animation. There's really no limit to what you can do. And let me go back into here and change that back to 700. 700 is pretty good. It kind of quickly comes in. And um, I do notice that if you make it too slow and the user's scrolling, it could start to run into some issues. So you don't want to make it too slow or too fast. So in this case, I think around 700 milliseconds is not too bad. And then they have different ways that you can ease in and out, or you can do linear here if you want to have a different type of animation. We have no delay. You can have a height of auto. Um, you could also turn this off, I believe. So let me get rid of that and let me update that code. Just make sure that this max height is going to work just as well. So if I go back into the front end, let me hit refresh and see how that works. And as you can see, it's scrolling in correctly. So you don't really need that auto height. Um, that was in there probably because I was a test, but now I have a little bit of a cleaner code. So now we have a uh, max height of 500 overflow hidden. And like I said, this all needs to be done using max heights. So let me just go ahead and update. 
And one thing that I will uh, let you know is I ran into an issue where if you don't have, like, let's say your left image here aligned toward the top, it will start to kind of like jump around when you scroll. So if you look right here, I have the vertical align for this image to top. So that means that the image is always at the top. So if I go back into here, hit refresh, you're going to see that this image right now is at the top because if it was in the middle or bottom, that would kind of move with it. So if you went back to the Walmart website, we noticed that that does not happen. So they have a very similar structure where this is being glued to the top, this is in the middle, and then that max height is pushing it up. So it's almost like the left panel is kind of sticky and the right is a little more fluid. So you can see right here, it will expand that out. Just like that. So just like my website, these images are at the top. This is kind of in the middle and we'll scroll up. Hopefully you thought this was a pretty cool tutorial. Um, I personally think this is a cool effect. And like I said, I'm probably gonna use this on uh, client projects in the future because it's a pretty cool, simple effect and doesn't add much bloat to your website at all. So I, I don't see a reason why I won't use this in the future. Um, I will leave all of the uh, code for the CSS and JavaScript in the description below. And that's it for this tutorial. Make sure that you give it a like, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and hit that bell to receive notifications when I release new tutorials like this. Again, this is Mark from Wiki Design.